Welcome back to the channel in this episode we start with making a charger base for the Zastone V77. Really like this little cheap affordable radio but uh, don't like fiddling around with the micro USB connector on the side and wanted a drop in plug in base I could use with the radio. This uh, rather well used radio with a bit of sand in the bottom there has uh, been used a, a fair bit by me and um, this is a conventional cell that's inside the case here. Uh, just to show you by example it's an 18650 cell which you can charge in a standalone charge like this now this particular battery does have a, a, a BMS system a battery protection system built into it and I don't know if the V77 battery has the same feature so I, I want to be able to charge this safely in the house so I thought I would just do a quick check with some leads uh, connect them up to the uh, meter and just see uh, if it managed to charge it externally but I just wanted something a little bit more um, <clears throat> a bit more easy and convenient rather than crop clips that barely touch so there's the uh, new 3d printer whizzing away there I got that going and uh, designed this uh, little dummy battery if you like it's an 18650 sized case uh, which I can break apart and pop a couple of fuses in now the fuses are there really just to get a connection uh, nothing more but they also obviously double as a, as a safety feature for the device so I designed it to take a couple of 5 by 20 mil cartridge fuses that slide in the end and then we'll just solder a wire to those bring it out through the center of the module and then uh, pop, pop that into the charger and then into the base and um, I just you've got to be really safe with these lithium cells I mean you've only got to go online and just check on YouTube haven't you to see how uh, how these things go off if they catch fire so we started up the um, the, the 3d printer there and, and got it going took roughly about an hour to print this now I'm still quite new to 3d printing so if some of you more experienced guys are watching this and questioning the uh, some of the finish I'm getting uh, any tips hints or whatever could uh, would be greatly appreciated but uh, I'm uh, I think I'm doing okay uh, um, I seem to this set printers very reasonably priced and uh, I think for the output I'm getting I'm very very happy with it uh, this is the Ender 3 Pro which was the upgrade to the Ender 3 which is a like I said 200 pound here in the UK printer amazing you can print parts for it and extras and all sorts that's what I love about this hobby you can print spares for the 3d printer <laughs> so anyway uh, once it had actually finished there it popped off the printer and um, I think it took roughly about an hour um, only on a 20% uh, infill here and uh, a 0.2 mil layer height so if you know about 3d printing you'll know about those sort of specs and uh, this has a magnetic peel up base on this printer so it's quite nice you just lift it up and your prints just peel straight off um, it might be quite hard to see with this camera unfortunately and because it's so black under the lighting but um, you can see there that the there's very little cleaning up to do with this particular print and uh, I managed to uh, pry it all apart nicely and then just a little bit of a craft knife and, uh, and a drill bit and it cleans up lovely. So the, the fuses slide in the end there and uh, I'll probably hot glue the tip once it's all soldered up and the wire is going to come out through that center piece in the, uh, in, the, in the dummy battery that you see. I've actually got other uses for this dummy battery so it's, uh, it's quite going to be quite a useful little thing because uh, I've got lots of stuff that runs off of these uh, cells so this is actually going to be quite a useful uh, little device and um, amazing how shiny this has come off some of my earlier prints came off a lot duller than this I think there's a must be a variation in the plastics there so I dropped it in to the little charging base which is a fantastic little uh, charge by the way this standalone charge there's a, be a link in the description below for this and the printer and other stuff so uh, check those out and um, uh, into Design Spark for the software. Now, this is, I, I mentioned this on the last video for the PF8. Um, the idea behind this is uh, rather than jumping headfirst in, with the PF8 project, I want to get some experience in the design uh, software and the 3D printing before I, uh, before I do the PF8. So, this is an ideal test doing these little charge bases and getting these just right before I actually move on to do the PF8. So, I think you'd agree this one's also come out pretty nice as well. This is incredibly strong. I work in the crane industry and this is a, a little little bit over engineered you could actually stand on this and it would take my full body weight uh, which is obviously fairly substantial <laughs> so uh, yeah I'm really really pleased with this and I designed this to be really really snug you could actually hang this upside down in your van or your, your workshop whatever you wanted it's uh, a nice snug fit and um, 
to charge this back when I was an apprentice we used to use test rigs that used um, little gold pins uh, spring loaded pins are very very good for, for for testing things and you push things into them so I, I, I'm going to use these to connect with the underside of the battery there and I, I've put brought in an image of the actual underside of the radio so I could get the holes to line up perfectly in the base because a little bit tricky to measure and that's the nice thing with the design spark you can uh, import pictures and do all that it's very very nice uh, to use you can get the scale right but it's very very good and one of the other projects was for the Bafang T1 radio uh, which hasn't got a charger base and I quite like that little radio so I uh, I knocked up this little base for it which those of you who watch Ringway Manchester's channel you'd have seen I uh, I sent him a couple of samples or three samples there and uh, so this was the first attempt and I just pushed made that so it was a press fit with the lead uh, up the up the inside and it, it works really really well this it just uh, I rip off the rubber flap on the bottom of the radio there I don't see the point in it our mobile phones don't have them do they in the so a 10 pound radio I'm not too worried about so again this was a nice snug fit fitted perfectly into the base and uh, plugging it in there to the USB uh, charger you can see it's charging away nicely now I, I also did a, a stand for the PF8 uh, I'm quite expensive radio the PF8 so I don't want to go knocking it over on the shelf uh, and this will also then double as a charging base for the new radio that uh, the new PF8 that I'll be uh, designing if you haven't watched that video it's uh, it's the last video on the channel go and have a look at that and see what you think uh, like I say I, I uh, put little recesses in the bottom so I could stick on some self adhesive rubber feet and really pleased with how this came out I uh, traced around the Pi logo and brought that in and stuck it on the side and this is a lovely fit absolutely just slots in like a glove um, so very very pleased with that and um, really really happy with my sort of first attempt at doing some of this stuff because I've not really seen anyone else do this uh, on, on YouTube anyway so um, I've just thought these these are uh, you know if you're a radio ham and you've got yeah uh, you know uh, lots of these radios now th this is a great a great find Steve off of eBay uh, I managed to win this he put it up in, in the auction and this is a much better case for a PF8 it's much better quality than my original case so uh, uh, I'm really pleased uh, to have got this and Steve included some information on the PF8 on the uh, uh, in, in this manual form here and wrote me a really nice letter so thanks for that Steve uh, it's gone to a very good home and it certainly is uh, in uh, quite a lot better nick than my original one on the PF8 and it will come in useful when I'm uh, finished the design on the other one. A um, little bit dark and dingy on the 3D printer so the other thing I did was made these lights uh, using self adhesive LED light strip which you can buy really cheap for about £5 for 5 metres and uh, stuck these uh, in the on the inside to uh, brighten things up on the bed of the 3D printer and to monitor all this I got a nice HD uh, Logitech webcam there uh, so when I'm out and about or at home I can just literally keep one eye on on the printer to see how it's going and I've got a wireless Wi-Fi plug to switch it off remotely if it all goes wrong um, M3HHY Lewis's uh, base there modeled up in 3d again just uh, there's no text facility on design spark so I had to manually trace that out but it's not a big problem and even for my son's uh, school projects here with the iron giant he had to make a small model and um, we brought the picture in in 2d there traced around it extracted him out into 3d and put some curves and bends on it and uh, I'm really really pleased with how this came out this is the slicing software called Cura which you take it into which creates the layers that the pre the 3d printer prints with the support so the blue areas you see on the the image there are the support layers and the yellow layers are the infill layers which give the uh, the the object its strength and um you don't have to go mad with infill it's amazing how strong that honeycomb infill is this was done at just at 20 percent infill on this model and uh, it's a small model but I, I think you'd agree it's come out really really well um I'm not sure school will believe that I that he did it all by himself. Um, some shelf brackets. I've got lots of HTs on the, on the shelf there, and I've knocked a few of them off. So I knocked up some shelf brackets. Uh, they're really really handy. And then these are a great example to show what 3D printing can do to, for people. The Flexi Rex. This wasn't my design. This was off of Thingiverse and uh, I've made printed about five of these now for different people. These are, are great. They literally come off the printer like this 
Uh, and so it's a great example of the technology that you can show to people. Uh, and finally, the last thing I made was for my favorite radio, the Anytone. I needed a little bracket so I could mount it in the car. I was going away for the weekend and wanted to have a chat on the radio while I was mobile. So I made this, drunkenly made this on a Friday night. And uh, yeah, so it's amazing that it came out so well, really. And uh, the microphone clip less so. This was a very last minute attempt, but it, it still works and uh, I'm really really happy with how the uh, how this has come out you can see there it's an absolute perfect fit and uh, it's, it's very strong as well and uh, it just hangs over the centre console there and the microphone clip clips in the, the air vent Oh, a very rough morning this morning I'm sat in a uh, farm shop in um, near town of Buckley uh, up uh, near Liverpool and I put the uh, any tone radio in the car. I've uh, 3D printed a little bracket for it so it hangs over the uh, the dash there for me and um, yeah I just thought I'd just see if I what repeaters I can access. There's a bit more activity on up uh, this way uh, so I just... Oh that's, that's, a, uh, that's a voice I recognise. We'll go for this then. G7 LNK. Uh, yeah good morning there young sir. Yep, good morning, you're on video. I'm just up um, Werneth Low, my usual high ground. It's a really nice day up here. Um, I've got a clear line of sight down to you, Paul, where you are in Mould, around um, 50 miles away. It could probably work simplex, actually, but um, yeah, you're cracking into the repeater. Uh, the repeater's about 40 miles away from me. Uh, back to you. G7LNK <coughs> returning. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Amazing. Superb, yeah, my voice is a, a few octaves lower this morning. It was uh, quite a heavy night last night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're just at this little farm shop. I've not been here before ever, but um, uh, I, I wondered what repeaters I could hit from here. And apart from the one, I think MP, I can nail all of them from here. So I can only think the location must be fairly decent, uh, Lewis, here. But um, how's the radio sounding to you? Again, I was just interested in an audio check. You're coming over really nice, actually. What you, what are you using? Your uh, your new mobile radio? Yeah, MQHHY Mobile. I'm using the Tomoko SRM9000 with the uh, nine zero two two handset set, which you'll see on the video here. I think I think I might have shown it to you actually. Yeah, I'm just on that one at the moment. The radio you're using is sounding absolutely perfect. Uh, no issues at all. Really good, strong, clear audio. Um, nice modulation and everything into the repeater so no issues at all I struggle with MP a little bit sometimes I think it's a bit hit and miss that's over in Denby in North Wales but um, yeah you're in quite a, a decent area there because you've you've got sort of a clear takeoff across like the Cheshire and Manchester flats so you can um, get into quite a lot of repeaters uh, I'm Well, that was great. Um, obviously, it wasn't entirely by chance. <laughs> I was coming up this way to see uh, family, and uh, I uh, we are, I, I WhatsApped Lewis, and uh, I thought it'd be a good uh, a test to see if we could contact each other. And yesterday, on the way up, uh, by chance, I would just I just had this on in the car, and I was a good fifty miles away from him, and uh, put a call out, and he was by, around his friend's house on, on listening to a repeater and heard me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I heard absolutely nothing. I had the this radio scanning the whole journey up the M M40 and the M6. There was nothing on at all. It was so sad. There's no no activity at all. And so, uh, you know, if you don't uh, use it, guys, you're going to lose it. I'm telling you. So uh, everyone should uh, try and get a radio in the car and actually get on the repeaters. And if you're sat in the shack at home and you're monitoring, I know it, sometimes it takes a, a few minutes, but if someone puts a call out, just pick up the mic and say, yep, yeah, hi there, you sound great, or you're getting in, or you don't sound great. You know, use the repeaters, guys, because, you know, the way this uh, government is selling off everything left, right, and centre, if we don't use it, we will lose it. So uh, I'm really I'm really an advocate of, uh, of UHF and VHF uh, comms. I don't, I, even though I've got HF equipment, don't I, I'm a shortwave listener, but I don't really go on it. I'm, I'm really a really big fan of this technology as anyone that watches this channel uh, knows Right, I'm gonna go into this farm shop for a cup of tea. I think I'm a little bit uh, dry <laughs> If you if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a, a like in the bottom And if you haven't already, please think about subscribing so you can uh, watch a bit more content like this. Catch you later